بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Today we will start with another set of sessions from the Hadith of Jibril. We had concluded last time the last session in the Articles or Pillars of Faith. And today we will continue starting with the Pillars of Islam. Uh, in the Hadith, Jibreel uh, addressed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O oh Muhammad, inform me about Islam. So he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam is to testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Islam is the apparent physical outward actions of, uh, of the Muslim. Uh, we had mentioned in the set of belief or the articles of faith, the, the difference between Islam and Iman and when they are uh, together in the same text, what happens and what do they indicate and when they're mentioned separately, meaning each alone in a text, what does that mean? We will just refresh the memory uh, because it's needed. When Islam and Iman are mentioned in the same text, just like the hadith that we are addressing now, each has a meaning. Islam uh, will be talking about the outward physical uh, actions, which coincides with the meaning of the word Islam, which is submitting oneself and subjugating oneself to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Whilst Iman will be talking about the inward uh, actions, which coincides with the meaning of faith, which is affirming and acknowledging the thing that you believe in. Uh, Ibn Rajab, rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, if any of the pillars of faith are left out, then a person is not to be called or cannot be called a believer. But one may have shortcomings with regards to some of the obligations of Islam and continue to co be called a Muslim until and unless he leaves the fold of Islam and negates the implication of La ilaha illallah. So he said Islam is, and he gave him the first pillar, to testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This testimony or these two testimonies of faith are the first pillar without which one cannot even uh, be called a Muslim. He did not yet enter into the fold of Islam so we, that we address him about the pillars of Islam and the pillars of faith. He has not yet entered. So it's the very first and most important pillar Anyone who wants to accept Islam or make sure his Islam is sound, he, needs, he or she needs to make sure that these two testimonies of faith are fulfilled. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this narration is proof that from the time he was commissioned ﷺ, from the time he was sent by Allah Azza wa Jal, this has become an obligation upon all mankind and jinn as well, which is accepting his message, sallallahu alayhi wa In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I swear by the one in whose hand the soul of Muhammad is, anyone amongst the community of the Jews or the Christians who hears about me and does not affirm Belief in that with which I was sent and dies in this state, meaning the state of disbelief, he shall be one of the residents of the fire of hell. Let's talk about each one of the two testimonies separately, testifying that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and then that. Muhammad is his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa Testifying that none is worthy of worship but Allah means that no one is deserving of that worship 
truly, because see, there are others that are being worshipped or were worshipped, but the only one who is truly worthy of this is Allah Azza wa Jalla. What are the obligations to be fulfilled so that we fulfill this part of the two testimonies of faith? Number one, one has to utter it with his tongue. Number two, he has to affirm it with his heart. Number three, one must act upon it, act upon the implications of the testimony of faith by performing good deeds and refraining from evil deeds. Whoever fulfills this will enter Jannah, even if he was cleansed by being punished either in the grave or in the fire of hell for a while, but eventually everyone who believes in these two testimonies of faith will have his final abode being Jannah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to admit us into Jannah without prior reckoning or punishment. Allahumma ameen. Now, there's a deviant sect called Al-Murji'a. These Murji'a believe that the definition of faith or belief in Allah, in the testimony of, in, uh, of believing in Allah. They say that it is merely uttering the word and affirming it in the heart and there is no deed involved or included rather in the definition of faith. They say or they believe that faith does not fluctuate, it does not increase and decrease and that those who sin are perfect in their faith and they're not harmed by the sins they commit as long as they have the faith in the heart and they utter it. And this is clear deviance. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا The true believers are those whose hearts become fearful when Allah is mentioned. And when the verses of Allah are recited before them, it increases them in faith. So this is clear deviance that Iman does not increase or decrease or that, ima, that uh, action is not included in the definition of faith or belief in the testimony of faith. This testimony of believing in Allah Azza wa Jal and that He is the only one worthy of worship, Ashhadu Allah. This is La means none. It's a negation. So it's negating or denying the existence of any deity that deserves to be worshipped besides Allah. And then Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa Allah is confirming and affirming that it is only Allah who deserves it. So this, it has a negation. It negates anything or anyone being, worship, being deserving of the worship except Allah and affirming this to Allah alone. Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi said when commenting on the verse, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا So whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, let them do good deeds and associate none in their worship with his Lord or their Lord. He said, these are the two principles that one must have in order to fulfill the testimony, the two testimonies of faith. Uh, not associating with Allah is the part that is related to Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Let them do good deeds. Good deeds here means, or the, the term means, deeds that coincide with the sunnah of Muhammad uh, action or sayings or affirmation. The, the sunnah, we will address that inshallah. So this, the part that is related to Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah 
is and let them do good deeds. So good deeds are deeds that are coinciding and in accordance with the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As we said, people have worshipped other than Allah and people still worship other than Allah. People, you have people who worship prophets, the sun, the moon, trees, uh, stones, animals, uh, pious people. Now, when I say they worship, let's not go with the classical definition of bowing and prostrating. By worship here, I mean they become the source of do's and don'ts. Anyone who becomes the source of do and don't for you, you have surrendered yourself to be a slave to him or to it. As the Prophet ﷺ said when, when Adi ibn Hatim, who was a Christian, when Allah revealed, they've, they've taken their monks and priests as lords beside Allah. He said, we did not prostrate or bow down to them. He said, did they not make what is lawful unlawful? And you obeyed them. And did they not make what is unlawful lawful? So they did two things. They made what's lawful unlawful and what's unlawful lawful. And you obeyed them. He said, yes, indeed. He said, this is your servitude to them. This is how you became slaves to them. This is how they became your lords besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the purpose of conveying the testimonies, the, the testimony of faith of Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Allah Azza wa Jal sent the messengers and the prophets. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ We did not send before you a messenger except that we revealed to him that none is worthy of worship but me, so worship me. So Allah Azza wa Jal sent the messengers and the prophets to convey that to people, to guide people to that, to the testimony of faith of La ilaha illallah. What are the conditions without which this testimony is not considered to be valid? The scholars extracted between seven to nine different conditions. They've agreed on seven, and some did not include uh, the last two. Some included one. So we will address eight of them, inshallah. The first one is knowledge. You must know the meaning of the testimony of faith. You must know it and understand the two pillars that we spoke about, negating anyone deserving of worship but Allah and affirming this to Allah Azza wa Jal. Opposite of this is being ignorant. Allah Azza wa Jal addressed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know, and this is knowledge, know, O Muhammad, that none is worthy of worship but Allah. Number two, Certainty. You must be certain. One must be certain uh, with uh, about this testimony of faith and the implications of the testimony of faith. And one cannot have any doubt about the testimony of faith. Otherwise, doubting is negates the definition of belief. Belief is firm, solid, surrender and acknowledgement and affirmation of whatever you believe in. It. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا The true believers are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger and then have no doubts. So you cannot claim belief and doubt at the same time. 
These are two opposites that don't meet. So certainty. Number three is unconditional acceptance of the implications of the testimony of faith. Believing and accepting its implications in the heart and saying that or uttering that in the, by the tongue. Number four, full submission to the testimony of faith or to the two testimonies of faith by fulfilling the rights of the testimonies of faith and by physical enactment. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ Who is better in faith than those who fully submit themselves to Allah while being a doer of good? Now, notice here, full submission coupled with action. Number five, truthfulness as opposed to hypocrisy and dishonesty. So one must utter the testimonies of faith truly from his heart. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Alif Lam Mim أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Did people think that they will be left saying that they have believed without being tested? For we have certainly tested those who were before you. And Allah will surely make evident those who are truthful and will surely make evident those who are liars. So claiming belief is something and being truthful about it is a, is a different story. Number six is sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Purifying the intention from anything other than Allah Azza wa Jal. As Allah Azza wa Jal described in the Quran, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ They were not commanded but to worship Allah with sincere devotion to Him. The seventh condition is love. To love these, the testimony of faith. And the implication of the, test, of, of the testimony of faith. And those who believe in the testimony of faith. And those who fulfill the conditions of the testimony of faith. And hate those who oppose it and negate it. In the The strongest bond of faith is to love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said three things. Whoever has them or possesses them will find the sweetness of faith, meaning in the heart. Meaning, he will enjoy acts of obedience and will be able to easily tolerate and shoulder the difficulty that, it might, that might accompany Performing these acts of worship and acts of obedience. What are these three things? Number one, he said that Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or when Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam become dearer to Him than anything else or anyone else. Number two, to love the a, the person, meaning a believing person, only for the sake of Allah. He will not love him, but for the sake of Allah. Meaning, he will not have any objective, anything hoped as the result of this relationship or this love, except for the sake of Allah. And number three, to hate, to go back to disbelief, just as much as he hates, being thrown in fire. Look at this. Subhanallah. 
يعني these three things if you if you think about them and you reflect deep you will find that truly if if one fulfills them he will be in a different world يعني when Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم become dearer to you than anything this has an implication it means that your life in totality will be in accordance to the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal and to the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what better can a life be? What joy and tranquility and peace will this bring to the heart when you're living as Allah wants you to live? Obeying Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam following into his footsteps, imitating him in everything, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is certainly going to be an unparalleled, un- unmatched life of spirituality. I'm not talking about anything else. Your heart will be flying in air. And when you love your fellow Muslim, Now this is the relationship between you and Allah and his religion. Now it goes to talking about communi- uh, relationships be- within the community. Loving people purely for the sake of Allah. When you love someone purely for the sake of Allah, none of the worldly matters will matter to you. You will help, you will feel, You will be supportive purely for the sake of Allah. A man came to Abu Huraira and he said, I want to become your brother in faith. He said, do you know the implication of this? To be a brother in faith, to love one another for the sake of Allah purely. He said, what is the implication of this? He said, when you and I both become equal in the disposal of your wealth. When you have no more right than me in spending your wealth. This is a high rank. But reaching it or striving to reach it will make the hearts together, it's going to be a different community. That's why they deserved رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. Allah was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah Azza wa Jal. And the last one, to hate, to go back, to retreat, to turn to disbelief or disobedience for those who are, who are Muslims originally. To hate to go back to disbelief or disobedience after Allah had blessed you with Islam or with practicing Islam. Just as anyone would hate to be thrown into the into fire, into a live fire. Last uh, last condition is rejection of false deities. Taghut. Rejecting Taghut. And Taghut is anything that is worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jal. As we mentioned earlier, the, when it becomes the source of do and don't, then that's called a Taghut. And that's the false lord or deity. The second part is testifying that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ None of the other prophets and messengers' names were mentioned in the two testimonies of faith except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This is because the religion with which he came or the legislations with which he came is the final. The Prophet sallallahu was the final messenger and the message he came with was the last message and the final message. And anything else and everything else is rejected by Allah azza wa jal. Allah azza wa jal says, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And whoever seeks other than Islam as a religion, then it will not be accepted from him 
and he will be in the hereafter amongst the losers. So those who claim uh, association with Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, their faith is altered, their religion was tampered with. And Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will disassociate himself from them. When, Musa, when Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will come at the end, of, will descend at the end of, of the time, before, prior to the hour, he will come and he will apply Islamic Sharia. He will not bring anything new because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was the final messenger with the final message. Alayhi salatu wasalam. What are the implications of testifying that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the messenger of Allah? Number one is to love him more than loving anyone else. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, none of you will truly believe until I become dearer to him than his wealth, his child, and all mankind. So, first is loving him. Number two is obeying him. Obeying him in all matters that he commanded, and obeying him in, by refraining from all matters that he forbade, alayhi salatu wasalam. Number three is to believe him. Believe him in everything that he has informed, whether things that were in the past, things that will come in the future, and things that at his time were present, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And included in this is not to reject or refuse his sunnah because it doesn't make sense. As one of the people, contemporary person, refused to accept the hadith uh, in the book of Imam Bukhari, where the Prophet ﷺ said, if a fly was to fall into your, your plate, then dip it and throw it away. Don't just pick it up and throw it away. Dip it and throw it away. He said, I, I can't accept this regardless of where it's narrated. He said that it doesn't matter where it's reported. It just doesn't make sense. Rationally, it doesn't make sense. Uh, what do you mean dip it? This is a fly. Now, we're not going to talk about what modern science said about the, the, the fly. And, but rejecting the hadith because it doesn't make sense to your mind that has a limited capacity goes against testifying that he is the messenger of Allah Azza Okay, following him, number four, following him. So Allah Azza wa Jal is to be worshipped according to what he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conveyed. Number five, defending him. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was ridiculed and was uh, bad mouth and was slandered was and then this happened in different eras and in our contemporary time as well so the least that he deserves from us in the attempt of defending him is to boycott those who uh, attack him and ridicule him alayhi salatu wassalam number six is saying salah saying sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the book of Imam At-Tabarani, and it was classed uh, by Al-Albani as authentic. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever says salah upon me from my ummah, from my nation, sincerely from his heart, Allah Azza wa Jal will say salah to him, uh, upon him ten times. Al-Munawi said, Allah saying salah on the human being is his mercy and multiplication of reward. This is what it means. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will raise his rank in Jannah ten times and will record for him ten rewards and will expiate ten sins from his record. Number seven is to confirm the names and qualities of Allah 
that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirmed and conveyed in authentic ahadith. And included in that is to negate or reject those who resemble Allah Azza wa Jal with his creation. Number eight, to believe that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of all messengers and prophets. In the book of an Imam Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I will be the master of the children of Adam on the day of judgment, except that I am not bragging about it. You know, you have to understand that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not speak out of desire. He speaks with revelation and anything that has to do with the unseen, with ghaib, with the future, it is something that was revealed to him. So something like this, when he says it, he says it because he's commanded to say that. And he ends it by saying, I'm not bragging about it. But this is just simply stating the fact that he will be in such status on the uh, day of judgment. Number nine is to believe that he is the final prophet and messenger. In the book of Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi, and it was classed as authentic by Al-Albani, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, messengerhood and prophethood have ceased. There will be no messenger after me, nor will they, there be any prophet, meaning after him, alayhi salatu wa sallam. So we must firmly believe that he is the final messenger and prophet sallallahu Number 10 is to believe that he was sent sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to all of mankind, to all of jinn, meaning to the worlds. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Tabarak alladhi nazzala al-furqana ala abidihi liyakuna lil'alameena nadira. Blessed is the one who has revealed the criterion, meaning the Qur'an, on his slave, so that he may be a warner to all the worlds. All the worlds include jinn and mankind, both. The final point here from the rights of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not to exaggerate when we are trying to apply this love. You see, giving him a rank higher than his rank is not a sign of his love because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and this is reported by al-bukhari he said don't praise me like the christians praised isa the son of maryam i am merely a slave so call me the slave of allah and his messenger some people have given the Prophet وسلم, a status that can only be, or, or, or qualities rather, that can only be attributed to Allah Some of them believe that Muhammad وسلم, knows the ghaib from himself, not from Allah. Some of them believe that after his death, he can harm and benefit until now. And they go to his grave or call upon him. And so say we need this and we need that. Believing that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has this rank, has this status. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during his time when he was alive, he could only ask Allah and Allah would do. Allah would bring benefit or cause harm. Allah azza wa jal would protect and guard. Not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not have this power, nor did he claim to have this power. But some deviants insist to give him this attribute, this, this quality, or these qualities that he does not possess, nor did he ever claim to possess, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With this, we will conclude tonight's session. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب لك